Hello, you know, my friends. It's Roger. We'll just to spend a couple of minutes on the very, very basics of electricity because it's going to totally change because of uh, electron flood theory. So, basic electricity now, all right, that is obviously an atom looking thing that has a core and then it has a bunch of electrons in orbits around it. Now, I say that that core has no neutrons and that core is made up of half of it is positive, half of it is negative, and then one additional negative tries to attach and that creates negative net in the center pushing all the tri in incoming electrons to stay in their orbitals. Now, I also show one tiny little bit sticking out the side there. Can you see that? A little bitty one sticking out the side. You know what that little bitty one is? That is a nuclear decay particle because that has to stay in resonance. Resonance means there's a certain number of particles that create a stable neutron, a stable proton. There is no neutrons. The stable proton is 1836 of those tiny little particles and they crush together just like something like that would crush together and they are stuck together and they cannot get apart and one of them sits or a batch of them depends on how many is in the outer orbits are way out here and they float around and they are pushed away because they cannot they cannot approach because it's negative in its core. That's what causes the atomic model to work in my theory. Now let's go into how it actually does work. This is Latham's crazy machines and this is tractor beam magnets. This is quantum mechanics in action. A negatively flooded core which was always going to be the case they will always have more negatives in the core than positives that keeps the electrons at bay when they jiggle its heat if that thing goes flying away it's light okay these are Einstein's claims and I will dispute virtually all of them light is a set speed and it cannot speed up I dispute that light is a wave of electromagnetism disputed light has no mass at rest therefore it is nothing I don't dispute that it is nothing. I dispute that it has no rest at mass. It is an electron. We'll talk about that. Light, which we, Einstein says is nothing, gains mass as that nothing speeds up. I don't think that's correct. If E equals mc squared, which light is nothing, which is the mass, you end up with E equals nothing. It must have no energy light, and I know that's not correct. He embraced the standard atomic model with neutrons, which cannot be correct because I can prove that simply with the variation of hydrogen. They cannot explain hydrogen, and I can, with electron flow. He did not understand gravity or magnetism. Gravity is magnetism. The Earth is a positive, attractive source, Everything that exists in the universe is, has negatives surrounding the atoms or are negatives themselves which are light. Therefore, everything that is mass attracts everything that has negatives. Therefore, it's all magnetism. He was oblivious to how light gets to Earth. He said there's nothing in between. It's a flappy wave of nothingness. It's a particle. The, the universe is filled with ether particles which have a mass and they have a potential energy. They are dark energy and dark matter on its way to becoming energy. He did have nice hair. Now, I'm going to go into the proof that I can, I can prove all this, what I'm saying. Okay, the real nuclear core is made up of 1,836 bits like that, and every neutron is 1,837, which makes it negative. There's 1,836 of a proton, which is 918 positives, 918 negatives. At 1,836 bits, half is positive, half is negative, it's basically neutral. However, when you throw one more electron on there, holding on to there, this mass becomes net negative. And the other neck particles will come around and try to attach, but they will be held in their orbitals due to that net negativity. 
Okay, if you think you know physics, we are going to go into physics. If you want to know physics, we are going to go into physics. If you want to learn physics, we are going to learn physics. We are going to go through hydrogen. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Did you know there was that many hydrogens? Did you know they had all these atomic weights? Did you know they had all these spins? Did you know they had all these stability, decay, half-lives? I didn't think so. But we're going to explain how that's possible. And it's only possible with electron flood theory. Now, I highly recommend um, http chem.libratexts.org. All fabulous things about chemistry. Now, these are about subatomic particles. You're, you know, I think I showed this before. Now, and these are the different charges that are on there. Neutrons, no charge. I, that's wrong. Atomic, no. The mass is the same as that plus one electron. I mean, it's just simple. It's the same as what they think a proton is. They add one more electron, you end up, you know, you take this and add it to that, you end up with this. There never was this. All right? So, now is where we basically stop the clock here. That is that wave, and it is now stretched, and it's accelerated. Case number one, light can accelerate. Case number two is you can see that little tiny dot. Now it's concussing on itself, trying to force itself through this venturi, showing up as a tiny little white particle, which I have better shots of. But it is a particle. It is not a wave. Case two closed. Now, this is the reverse magnetic wave from this enormous concussion. These little white dots in the air are free electrons. That's ether. I don't believe Einstein embraced ether. Case three. Closed. That's the accelerated light causing the Higgs fields to explode as the boson particles which are accelerated and charged crash into the ether of space polarizing the free electrons surrounding them, creating the Higgs fields. Exactly same exact identical fields that CERN is looking for. Only theirs are much heavier. And this tells me that all particles are the same, and that supports my atomic model theory that there are no neutrons. This is exactly what I have shown the concussion, only I crushing in the Venturi, they hit them head on, and theirs are 8,000 times heavier than mine. They create the identical same fields. They are the same particles. CERN admits they cannot see these. They know they're there. They know because of conservation of mass and energy and so forth. These are electron neutrinos so small they say they can't ever be able to pick them up. I'm showing them to you. I am using light, These are, which is electrons. I am in the light realm. They're in the heavy particle realm, the protonic realm. Totally different, and they are unable to do what we're showing you. Not only that, that's a reverse spinning particle. These are the normal right-hand spin. That's a left-hand spin, and this is what happened. They created this mini particle. That's the white particle crashing into a Higgs field. It appears to be creating its own field and emanating a partial field. This is light. These are light particles in there. And the field is created because the light particle is crashing into the electrons that are in space. That's not even anywhere as close to that same size. So what is going on there, CERN? I would like to understand that. I like to have a little interaction. This is serious stuff. I'm, I've got things that I can, should, can show. And that Venturi may possibly be able to create plasma in the proton realm with no additional input. It is a crusher. You are crushing. Plasma requires crushing. Plasma is required for fusion. Fusion is required to save the Earth. Einstein said light came from the sun, but it was nothing between the sun and here, which I say is kind of crazy. 
I say that all the atoms there are have a core like this. And the ones on the sun got so excited that the electrons that were floating around here got thrown off and spun off until they hit the earth. Because the earth is a positive source. You take electricity, it will always go to earth. Static, electricity, lightning, it tries to seek the positive earth. These are negative electrons. They are thrown from their orbitals. They end up hitting the earth as light. That is what comes through, and it is a particle. It weighs 0 0.0054585, something like that, atomic mass units. There's bazillions of them hitting the Earth every second. This, or the, the entire universe is filled with these tiny particles. Some of them are big like this. Some of them are chunks like this. They're not complete, and those are radioactive. They will not stay stable because they are not resonance. 1,836 of these bits makes a resonant chunk called a proton. 1,837 makes a resonant chunk that becomes negative because it has an excess negative charge. You are now smarter than any other physicist that ever breathed oxygen. All right, I'm going to go through this kind of quick because it really is simple. Once you take the neutrons out, it's, it's very simple. Nucleuses are flooded with electrons. I showed you that in that magnet um, quantum display there. Now, so we know that the core always has more negatives than positives. I'm saying they're all the same particles. And I'm saying all particles equal a certain atomic mass unit. They said it was this for electrons. I don't think it's exactly correct, but it's damn close. All particles are plus or minus. All right? The minimum stable core is 1,837 parts. I thought it was 1,836. It's really 1,837. The last part gives it the negativeness to hold the other ones in at bay. Now, hydrogen protium, that's the basic stablest hydrogen, is supposed to be this big number of atomic mass units. Now, let's analyze that number. If we take that number and we divide it by the atomic mass units, or multiply it times what I'm saying, 1,836 mass units of that number equals this. You see, that number is almost exactly the same as the number above it, hydrogen protium. It's very, very close. Um, now, I'm saying that hydrogen 1, which is this basic hydrogen, has 1837 in the core with 1 in orbit. That makes 1838. Now, if you divide the, what they say is the mass of hydrogen, by 1838, you end up with this number, 0 0.00054833. They say it's 0 0.0054858. I'm going with this. I think mine is correct. Now, therefore, because they don't understand that the, even how the thing works. I mean, they got protons hanging out, one big proton, trying to collect one little electron, and it just, it, it's impossible. So, and, and it, now everything works out. You saw all those different isotopes. There is zillions of isotopes. You have no idea the number of isotopes. And all they are is unstable chunks of atoms. If that thing was full, it's like this. If it's going to be unstable, it's like this. It's, it's, just, it's laying around in chunks like this. A boom, and they smash together. Or they smash into your face. Or they do something terrible. That is nuclear decay. They cannot exist outside of a resonance frequency, which happens to be 1,837 of these at a time. That, or, or 1,836, I suppose, would be. i got to work out the, the final little details. But as they accumulate in the nuclear core, you will always have more neutrons than you have protons. The only thing they can't deal with is, is hy hydrogen, so they just said, oh, no, don't talk about hydrogen. <laughs> Once they get into helium, they say, oh, well, now you've got two of these and two of these, so everything's fine. Well, how about hydrogen? Well, don't, we don't want to talk about hydrogen. Well, I do. I like, I like hydrogen. I love hydrogen. I think hydrogen is fabulous. One of my favorite molecules. No, our atom, actually, element. Now, so you have that number. 
and they increase one by one by one by one by one. Those are your elements. Simple as that. So I suppose we'll leave it at this. Every tiny molecule part in all of these is 0 0.0054833 per subatomic particle mass. And I'm going to call them PMs, particle masses. So every particle mass is plus or minus, and they're all equal. Case closed. They're all particles, but they're all dipoles. That's the key. That's the thing that really gets me crazy. And I have seen these split, so don't tell me they can't split. I've shown that in the light experiments. We're going to look at those now. Okay, just to recap, a single pulsed red laser showing the ether particles illuminating. That same red laser pulsed disc being stretched, elongated, concussing, displaying its particle nature, which is the particle nature of light, which is one of these bits in the entire atom, so that's the smallest subatomic particle that I know of that's stable, that little bitty one spun off of there, which is over here. How that happens was a reverse spinning particle, which is this white one, came down and slammed into a Higgs field and generated that. Now, what that will end up being, I am not sure. And that's the only one I've seen of those. Whoops, let me come back to here. All right, now, these are the Higgs fields. Those are the Cherenkov radiation and turning into the Bose particle, charged particle carriers, which are going extremely fast, slamming into the air. Exactly what CERN says is an electron neutrino, which they cannot see and we're seeing. You saw the new particle. These, I believe, are the actual particles. Now, what confuses me is that they are dipoles, and if there's a positive and a negative particle, I'm a little concerned whether it's a spin this way, spin that way, spin that way, up, spin, down, spin. There's something going on that differentiates the negative from the positive. Because to me, I'm seeing a negative and a positive here. So if this is a dipole, what's the difference between this dipole and the other dipole that makes this one positive or negative and the other one positive? So that's the kind of thing I would like somebody to look into. Because I, that, I, really, I really can't can't find an answer for that in my own mind. If this is a dipole, what could the other thing be? I can't think of what it could be. Because the other thing could be a dipole, but then it's just the same as this, as far as I'm thinking. So there's something different. There's some difference in that dipole nature between the positive and negative, as far as I can go with it. Now, that all, and this also shows, oops, this one here also shows the right-hand spin, which means the particle will drift to the left because it's coming to the, you know, it's always trailing a little bit. And it's wide here, which obviously means that it's, it's moving pretty fast, and then it's compressing up here, which means it's about to crash with the Higgs fields, which is nothing more than particles of light, which are electrons, which are free. They're not actually light now. The only time they turn into light is somebody concusses them. And the light particles I showed you in these other, these are all light particles. And they're all the same thing as electricity. They're the same thing as lightning. They're the same thing as static that collects on you. Those particles, when somebody grabs and smashes into their atmosphere, which is what this wave did, and this wave does, it's crashing through and saying, get out of the way. And it says, if you push me out of the way, I am going to glow. And the harder you push me, the harder I'll glow. And if you push me so hard, I'm going to just go flying out of here a zillion miles an hour and turn into light myself. How's that? And that's what happens. All right. So I'd like to have some interaction with somebody that has the ability to see if this could create fusion. I don't see why it couldn't. It is a crusher. CERN, only thing they're doing is crushing. Only we're doing it for free. And they spent, you know, probably twice as much as I spent on this. All right? Mud Fossil University, thumb this up if you like it. And uh, if you don't, go away. <laughs> All right, I love you. Thank you.